I worked at a junkyard when I was in my teens. My boss, Chris, and his family had owned and lived at the junkyard since the 40s. It was his grandfather's and his father's before we took over in the late 80s. One Monday, I came into work to find the shop locked and everyone was up at the house. I walked over and lit a cigarette and wasn't really paying attention to what they were talking about. I looked over to see his sister and wife were in tears and his son was crying. Now his son Josh was seven or eight at the time and he was a good kid who I never saw get into any shit. Chris walked over and told me they were staying shut down for the day and that he'd still pay me for the day. I was like, cool, see you later and got on my car and left. I was an ignorant teenager who only cared about myself and what was going on in my life. So if I could get a paid day off, I'd take it. When I came into work the next day though, I felt horrible and apologized to Chris and asked if everything was okay. So here's the story Chris told me. Josh never knew his great grandfather or grandfather. They were dead long before he was born. I never knew the story of how his great grandfather or grandfather died, but I knew his grandfather had killed himself, but never knew how. Supposedly, Josh got up Monday morning and walked into the kitchen while Chris's sister was picking up photo albums. Josh sat down at the kitchen table and started going through the albums. He looked at his mom and said, hey, I know this guy. Chris's wife sat down and laughed as there was no way Jose could know any of the people in the album. Now Josh has never seen a pic, video, or anything of either of his grandfathers. He was pointing at his grandfather and saying, yes, I do know him. His mom asked how. Josh said he floats in the tree outside his window sometimes. In the early 80s, Chris's dad hung himself in the elm tree that stood outside Josh's window. It completely messed with the family and the photo albums got put away. They hired a local psychic and had her over to look into what Josh said. Of course, all she said was she felt a very strong presence near the tree in Josh's room. They ended up cutting the tree down and moved Josh's room over to the other side of the house. I quit working there after summer and headed back to school. I never worked there again and I don't know what happened to Josh. This was about six years ago, in early 2014. I'm a merchant marina and at the time was working on an American flagged car carrier in the engineering department as an oiler. My whole life growing up, I've had some rather strange things happen. Seen some things, felt some things, etc. But this is the first time I've had it happen on a ship I was working on. I was on the midnight to noon watch with the third engineer. When I was in the middle of my readings one evening, I happened to notice an orange blur in my peripheral vision on the deck below which was the lowest deck in the E slash R. I turned my head and caught just a glimpse of orange overalls walking down the shaft. This wasn't the engineer or anyone else in engineering as we didn't wear coveralls. Our work outfit consisted of cargo slash mechanic pants and whatever shirt you owned. The deck guys, however, did wear orange. So I finished up my reading and walked down to the lower level to find him, the guy. I thought maybe it could have been the AB on Nightwatch, but they didn't make rounds in engineering spaces, but whatever. So I go down there and no one's there. Whatever, probably just tired, I thought, and finished my rounds. After finishing up, I turned in the sheet to the third in the control room, then stepped back out to go start on a project. When I saw the door to the tool room slash machine shop, flap closed. Again, I thought probably a decky down here to steal a tool or something. So of course I went to the shop and as I entered the shop, the door to the storage room was just closing. I continued to follow, but there's no one in the storage room. And the only other way out would be through steering and up into the main cargo deck. I continued into steering, gave a quick glance around. Again, I found nothing. On my way back out, I glanced into the hydraulics room when I finally saw him. He was facing away from me, looking at a panel and I almost just walked past. I caught myself mid-step 
and shouted over the sound of the steering pumps to get his attention. The man jumped and was turning around when the ship lost power. Losing power was nothing new. The ship has had a faulty shaft generator for a while. It was pretty standard. I didn't think anything of it until I got my flashlight out of my pocket and the man was gone, like he was never there. I looked around, but nothing. I was starting to get a little nervous and jumpy at that point, but right before panic could set in, the diesel generators kicked in and lights were restored. I returned to the control room to ask the third if Decky had left the engine room. He said no. Cut to a few days later, I was talking with the boatswain's mates in the deck locker when I noticed a picture hanging almost as if it were a memorial. And I asked him about it. The bosun said it had been there for a while. The ship used to be Swedish flagged and they had a death aboard back then before it became US flagged. I sort of went quiet, then told him what I saw a few days ago and he just goes, oh yeah, we catch glimpses of him roaming the cargo deck sometimes too. I didn't have anything else happen that trip and we even got the shaft generator fixed in the next port. But still, it was sort of wild having that happen in the last place I'd ever expected. My first experience happened when I was just a couple months old. Clearly I don't remember it, but my dad does. And I had my first memorable experience when I was six. Things seemed to follow me, or maybe I just ended up in the right place, at the right time. Whatever the case, I've had more experiences in 26 years than most people will have in their lifetime. A large chunk of those experiences happened at my dad's house. It's a tiny five-room bungalow, built in the late 30s or early 40s. Metal siding, a small attic, and an even smaller root cellar with an eerie crawl space. It sits on about a half acre of land in a small town that, quite frankly, has a strong foreboding vibe all of its own. Beyond the backyard is a small cornfield. Beyond that, a woods with a small swamp running through it. That swamp has some stories of its own from what I remember. My dad bought the place when I was 15. I wasn't as excited about moving out of a rusted ancient trailer as I should have been. Dad had spent two or three years looking for an actual house for us. We must have looked at 40 houses at that time, some better and prettier than the bungalow. The first question he asked me the day we started moving our stuff was, what do you think? Is this place haunted? I said, I don't know, but something feels weird. I moved in with him full time when I was 18. Divorced parents, shared custody. That was when things started getting spooky. It wasn't long after dad bought the place that things started happening. Although he didn't tell me about them until I started experiencing them. I'd often smell a smoky floral perfume moving through the house. Sometimes it just smelled like roses. It never stayed in one spot. Dad said he smelled it a lot. Sometimes it was so strong that it woke him up. Footsteps, lots of them. Movement in the attic. There's only one way into the attic, a drop down door above where my bed used to be. Some nights I'd hear walking, stomping and furniture being dragged up there. However, there was no proper floor up there. If you've ever watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and remember the attic scene, you know what I'm talking about. I used to want to be a singer, so I'd spend a lot of my time alone, which was most of the time, trying to build up my confidence and train my voice by singing loudly. One day, I sang a song pretty damn well, and when I finished, I heard hearty clapping coming from my bedroom. I just paused and said, thank you. Eventually, more advanced spooky things started happening. The first event I remember was in the middle of a beautiful bright day. I was folding laundry in my bedroom when I heard a large dog barking in the house. I went out to look, thinking one of my neighbour's pit bulls had gotten in. They had tried before because they think every house is theirs. Not logical now, but at the time, that was my only thought. When I got out there... There was no dog. Nothing was out of place except the dryer was open. 
I always closed it because the open door blocked the back door too much. It was also hard to open and had to be slammed shut. The moment I saw the door was when the voices started. Male, female, young, old. They started as a collective whisper that came from every wall in the house and progressed to a mix of whispers, talking, yelling, screaming and crying. The only place it didn't come from was my room, as I found out from running there and curling into the fetal position on my bed. I could hear them from behind my door and soon it sounded like the voices had all congregated right there, trying to get to me, only to be stopped by a flimsy accordion door. I put my hands over my ears and cried. Eventually, he started praying and reciting Psalm 23. I wasn't even that religious at the time. After reciting the psalm, the voice stopped, and I went calm immediately before falling asleep for an hour or so. After I woke up, I went to my friend's house down the road. Her mother hates me to this day and thinks I'm a demon-possessed heathen. She didn't think too highly of the story I had to tell. The second event involved the band. I've only seen it once. To get to the only bathroom, you have to go through my dad's bedroom. His bed is right beside the door, and he has under the bed storage drawers. One day, I walked in there and saw that one of the drawers was half open. He never kept the drawers open. As I walked past, a pale grey, long, emaciated arm shot through the door and tried to grab me with spindly fingers. I instinctively jumped over it and went to the bathroom like I'd seen nothing. I figured it was better not to let whatever that was know I was afraid. A couple days later, I was telling my dad about the arm. I went into his room, which is next to the dining room, and tried to sort of recreate the event. Dad has a corner curio cabinet with a mirrored back in his room. I stood near the bed and looked over the curio cabinets and saw a woman standing behind me. She was white, not Caucasian white, just pure snow white. Her skin, hair, eyes, even her dress, all one even tone. Her hair was up in an antique bun style and her dress looked to be a plain style dress from the late 1800s. While I tried not to let the hand even scare me, this woman drove me over the line. I screamed and started crying. This was my second or third time seeing a full body apparition, but it was the first time I'd ever been so frightened by one. Dad came in and obviously no one was there. Seeing her was what really started the worst of it. She would end up being a major player in all of this. Sometime between the first meeting her and the most horrifying event involving her, I got a dog. Her name is Ferris, and she's my baby. She had a hard time adjusting, so I spent a lot of time at night with her by my side as I watched movies by myself. Dad worked long hours and was often in bed at eight, so I always closed the French doors between the living room and dining room to keep the noise down. A few days after adopting Ferris, I noticed she would look over the doors and growl. I ignored it for a week or so, chalked it up to her adjusting. Then one night, I looked over and really wished I hadn't. On the other side of the doors were hands pressed firmly against the lower panes of glass, and figures low to the ground, moving in a slithery, almost slimy way. I couldn't make out the details, but somehow the images of decomposing bodies writhing in pain on the floor came to mind. Instead of freaking out, I turned up the TV volume and watched my movie, all the while glancing over at the figures behind the door. They never left the entire time I was out there. I'd seen them a few times afterwards, but they eventually went away. Ferris always let me know when they were there. They also never left handprints. Then there was Quasimodo. I don't know who or what he was, but I had only ever seen him in the reflection of a full wood and glass curio cabinet that my dad had sitting on top of the TV stand in the living room. He was mostly shadowy, although I could make out certain details like the cut and colour of his hair, his hunched back and twisted arms. The first time I saw him, I looked over at the curio cabinet as I walked through the room and saw him walking closely behind me. 
It made me jump, but I didn't feel afraid like the white woman did. He didn't stick around long. I wish he could have taken that bitch's place. There was a time when our sump pump malfunctioned and the root cellar flooded. I was woken up by my dad yelling up from beneath the floors. We got fucking problem down here. I was a bit pissed that he woke me up like that. And if he thought I had some broken appliance spidey sensors that should have woken me up hours ago, just as the pump broke. I asked him later why he woke me up like that. He said, woke you up? I heard you walking around upstairs before I even said anything. We both got a chill from that one. Now for the long story. The day of absolute hell. I hadn't slept well that night. I woke up around 4am. I know this because I could hear my dad out in the kitchen making coffee before he went to work. I'd been woken up to the feeling of someone's entire hand covering my face, using their fingertips to grip tight. I laid still for a while and hoped that it was a dream. Sleep paralysis, maybe. But I could move, and when I looked up at the wall, I saw something so incredibly surreal. I used to have a beautiful handmade yarn shawl I got at a thrift store. I kept it hung up on my wall because it was so beautifully made that I considered it a work of art. Popping out of the neck hole of the shawl was a human head. It was pale grey, had dark, almost childlike features, but there was something so menacing about it. I stared at the head for a long time. It stared back at me expressionless and only blinked a couple times. I eventually heard my dad leave and I ran to turn on the light. I never broke eye contact with the head and it never broke eye contact with me. Just like something out of a cheesy horror movie, the moment I turned on the light, the head was gone. I tried going back to sleep with the lights on, but couldn't. I sat out in the living room and watched TV until about 7am. About that time, I felt like my heart was being crushed from within my chest. I saw a pale, transparent figure standing in front of me with its hand to my chest. I recognised it as the white woman and tried to get up. Somehow, she held me down. I reached for my phone to call my mom, but for some reason, the call wouldn't go through. Texts did, though. I sent my mom a play-by-play -play of what was going on and told her how scared I was and that I thought the woman was trying to kill me. Of course she was. I used to have screenshots of the texts I sent to my mom, but they became lost after an old phone I kept them on died. The white woman vanished just as I felt like I was going to pass out. Maybe die. I got out of my chair and ran outside. One of my neighbours was out in her car about to go to work. She knew we believed the house was haunted, but never judged us for it. So I ran to her and told her what was going on. She tried to calm me down and told me everything would be okay. She said to call her if anything else happened and she would pick me up and take me back to work with her. I went back inside and immediately regretted it. Walking past my dad's room gave me a terrible feeling. I peeked inside and saw the woman standing in the corner with her back towards me, her chest and shoulders heaving as if she was taking long, laboured but silent breaths. I didn't stick around. I grabbed my purse and keys and ran back outside just before my neighbour was about to go to work. I frantically told her what I saw. If there was any doubt in her mind, it was gone now. She saw how stressed and terrified I was. She walked over to look at the house and then turned to look at me. Behind her, I saw a woman's face staring at me through the kitchen window. I shrieked and watched as the face quickly ducked back to my right. The direction she moved is illogical, since there's a cabinet, sink and wall there. Sometimes I wonder if she left the house for a moment. My neighbour explained to her bosses and co-workers that I was with her because I had some home issues and needed to get out of there. I'm sure they all thought I was on drugs just by looking at me. I was a sleep-deprived mess, dressed in mismatched clothes and slippers. At one point, I tried sleeping on a couch in the lobby. I couldn't sleep. I tried sleeping in the conference room. I couldn't sleep. I wandered the building for a while and eventually made my way to an unused cubicle across from my neighbours. The rest of the day is a blur. Things sort of calmed down after that. There were small experiences here and there. 
footsteps and smells. I moved out shortly after that for various reasons. I've only been back twice. Dad says those small things happen from time to time, but nothing big. My experiences in general have slowed down. Maybe it's because I'm not seeking anything else. Maybe it's the stress of the tangible world overshadowing anything that may try to show itself to me. Sometimes I miss it. Most of the time, I look back at all the other otherworldly bullshit I've seen and think, nah, I'm good. I was baptised May 20th, 2018, by my cousin, who's a Methodist preacher. At the time, she was a preacher at a church outside Wildwood, New Jersey. Even though my mum and I didn't live in New Jersey, we decided to join the church anyway, since it was only a couple hours driving distance. With me were my mom and my dad. The ride up there was fine. We took the same route we always take. I can't tell you highway names or numbers, or even town names, because I've always been bad at remembering stuff like that. The ride back is what really messed us up. We got onto a stretch of highway that we'd been on numerous times before. My mum knows the way to and from Wildwood by heart, but always has Google Maps up on her phone as backup, just in case. As we went along, things got weird. It wasn't something I could put my finger on right off the bat but there was this really intense feeling of unease in the environment around us. Eventually, I realised how quiet everything was. My dad talked from time to time, but when he was silent, the whole world was silent. Even the car's engine was eerily silent. After a while, I realised that the highway and the trees around us stopped looking normal. The highway itself was just a straight road for miles and miles ahead of us. No signs, no bends, no curves, no exits, no places to make a U-turn, no buildings off in the distance. The sky and the trees looked grey. Not a rainy day kind of grey, just a nearly colourless grey. I looked over at Mum's phone, which still had maps up, and realised that we were being directed to make a U-turn at some unseen turn-off. Looking at maps, there was nothing around us. Just one long, straight highway. The last thing I realised was the lack of other cars. For the past 50 minutes or so, there hadn't been a single car on this desolate, pin-straight highway. Just as I noticed that, Mom and Dad both realised that something was wrong. Mom said she must have missed the exit. Dad said he hadn't seen a single exit for the longest time. I mentioned how the annoying robot chick from Maps hadn't spoken a word in forever. That's what really set the tone for my mom, since that robot voice was something of a running joke with us. We sat in a very uncomfortable silence for a few more minutes, until finally we saw a car, then another, and another. Signs started reappearing, and we found a place to turn around and eventually found our exit. Even the colour came back to the world around us. I've tried talking about this with my parents a few times since it happened. My mom never adds anything to the conversation. Sometimes it seems like she's highly disturbed. My dad and I talked about it once, which made him uncomfortable. Now, he just changes the conversation to something else when I try. I've come to the conclusion that us realising that something was wrong is what snapped us back to our reality. If we hadn't, How long would we have been on that highway? Would it have gone on forever, with us blissfully oblivious to the surreal world that we somehow slipped into? My biggest fear is that there was something at the end of that highway. And if we had made it to the end, there would have been no coming back. If anyone has had a similar experience or has heard of one, please let me know. I'm still very disturbed by what happened. It's been over a year since we went back to New Jersey, And I know we're due for another trip very soon with a family reunion on the way. And I'm afraid of it happening again. A few years ago, I lived in a haunted house. I've always been fascinated by the paranormal. And living at this house is what solidified my belief that ghosts and spirits are real. 
I think it's time to finally share my stories, as I find so much enjoyment in other people's stories. This one's going to be long, so buckle up. A few years ago, I moved to a small town on Vancouver Island, called Tofino. Indigenous peoples had lived there for hundreds of years, but upon civilization, a residential school was built on an island across from the town, which didn't close until 1983. Lots of children died at these schools from malnourishment, physical abuse, lack of medical care, and many suffered horrific sexual abuse from the staff. Currently, the town is now owned by rich people with vacation homes, while the indigenous peoples have been pushed to a reserve outside of town. I believe that the genocide and abuse that took place in that town is the cause of the hauntings. Now that you have some context to the history of the town, I'll start my story. So I arrived in town and right away found a house to live in. I was placed in a makeshift storage room the landlord had made by hammering a big piece of plywood onto the end of the kitchen. My first night sleeping there, I remember lying in bed and having the unnerving feeling that I was being watched. I felt the need to sleep facing the wall because it felt like something was looking at me from the doorway. I chalked it up to anxiety from moving to a new town and didn't think much of it. Immediately after moving in, things began to get weird. The first paranormal experience I had living there was about one week after I moved in. My roommate had a friend who was visiting from out of town and sleeping on our couch. In the middle of the night, I'm gonna say at around two or 3 a.m., I began hearing a knocking and tapping from somewhere in the house. This knocking proceeded to slowly move around the house. I again didn't think much of it and chalked it up to being mice in the wall or some kind of animal. The next morning, my roommate's friend who was sleeping on the couch approached me and asked me if I had heard a tapping sound overnight. She told me that she had heard it beginning in one of my roommate's rooms and was getting annoyed because she didn't understand why he was banging on the wall. She said she distinctly heard the knocking sound move out of the room and into the bathroom. At this point, she went to comfort my roommate because she was annoyed and wanted to go to bed. She approached the bathroom door and could hear the knocking extremely loudly from inside. She knocked on the door and said, Phil, and the banging immediately stopped. She waited for a minute for him to reply and after hearing nothing, opened the bathroom door to find it empty. She actually ended up staying up the entire next night because she was so freaked out and left a day early. I asked my roommate about it after her friend left, and she proceeded to let me know that almost every single guest she has ever had a sleepover has asked her the next day if the house is haunted, due to some weird experience they've had while staying with us. Over the four months that I lived there, the knocking happened frequently. The most unnerving experience I had with knocking was one night when the knocking came into my room. It proceeded to move around my room and eventually came right next to my head. It was one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced and I just pretended to be asleep because I didn't want to let it be known that I was scared of it. I still have no rational explanation for what could make this sound, especially because it would move around the house from room to room. Another experience I had while living there was when I went to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. As I explained, my bedroom was at the end of the kitchen. I needed to go through the kitchen to get to the bathroom. This is gonna sound like some paranormal activity shit, but when I went to go back into my bedroom, about half of the kitchen cabinets had been opened in the span of the minutes I was peeing. I remember them being closed when I left my bedroom and I didn't hear anyone, extremely old creaky house, come or go from the kitchen while I was in there. Again, I didn't want it to know that I was scared, so I pretended I didn't notice and went to bed. After I had lived there for two months, a childhood friend of mine from back home moved to Fino, and she began dating and moved in with my landlord, who lived in the master suites of our house. She told me that on multiple occasions during the night, the bathtub or sink in their ensuite bathroom would turn on full blast. The things also turned on in the bathroom during the night. From what I remember, this is the extent of what she experienced, 
but I follow up some time to ask. I guess the final experience I had living there was one day we decided to have a roommate's meeting about the haunted house. During our meeting, at the exact same time, two of the bedroom doors slammed shut. To be fair, a window was open in one of the rooms, but it seemed so weird that not one, but both doors slammed closed simultaneously during our only meeting we ever had about the house being haunted. Okay, first of all, I want to state that I'm a very skeptical person and don't generally believe things without solid evidence and research. But an experience of mine from when I was a teenager is still unexplainable in my head. When I was younger, me and some of my friends would go and hang out outside. And there's a little playground in my neighborhood where kids and teens in our age group would typically go to hang out at. One day in winter, me and a few of my friends went to this playground and were hanging out next to the playground on a slight hill, which was right in front of this walking trail that leads to other parts of the neighborhood from the playground. It was a very cold day and there was snow on the ground which we were playing with. We were the only group of people near the playground at that time until suddenly we all noticed this man walking on the trail right in front of us. It was weird because from where we were sitting you could see both ends of the trail extend for over 300 yards. But this man almost seemed to appear completely out of nowhere. Me and the group I was with immediately noticed that and thought it was weird that we didn't notice him walking before he was a few feet away from us as we were all facing that direction before. We all stopped talking as this man slowly walked past us. He didn't even look at us or acknowledge us as he walked by, but there was something very off about him that I picked up as I was looking at him from a few feet away. He was a very slender man. His skin was as pale as the snow on the ground and almost had a mannequin-like face structure. He was wearing a black fedora type hat with a red ribbon through it and a matching black suit and tie with a red lining on the inside of it. He was also wearing sunglasses, which I thought was particularly weird because the sun was being blocked by the overcast and it was a gloomy looking day. After we walked past us and his back was turned to us, we all turned to each other to whisper what a weird looking guy that was. And how was he not freezing wearing just the outfit when it was below 30 degrees outside? But then, as we were making fun of him, we turned back to get another glimpse of him on the trail before he was gone. We only looked for maybe 30 seconds, and there was no possible way anyone could travel the path that fast, as he was only maybe 10 feet away from us as we turned to each other. Needless to say, this sort of creeped me and my friends out, because we all saw the same guy, and we all saw him seemingly vanish, so we left. This happened many years ago, but it's still something that bothers me in my head because I just can't explain it. We were not on drugs or drinking or anything, so it didn't make sense. And we all saw him, so I'm not just a crazy person. I was curious about it randomly today and decided to Google it. And I was very surprised to find accounts of people retelling a similar event and claiming it was the hat man. But I don't know. I think this might be different from other people's events, as the person I saw didn't meet all of the same descriptions as what other people say online. But does anyone have any thoughts or ideas on an explanation for this? This was the only paranormal thing that ever happened in my life. And it happened shortly after I started working some 20 years ago. My parents and I were living in my brother's house. He had this nice, big ass master bedroom with ensuite bath. Shortly after we got married, he bought another condo and moved out with his wife. My parents didn't want the master bedroom, and so I quite happily snapped it up. I decked it out with a big screen HD TV, a nice glass desk, and a big comfy sofa. It was like my own little bachelor suite. One day during the weekend, I was just happily watching TV on my couch. It was daytime and my parents were out. Suddenly, a loud glass shattering sound 
came from the desk behind me. I instinctively jumped off my couch and turned towards my desk to assess the racket. My desk was made by IKEA. It was an L-shaped desk and was made up of three glass panels with a metal frame. The smallest of the three panels was missing and apparently it had just exploded into tiny bits across half the bedroom floor. I have to stress, it didn't shatter, it exploded. My computer modem was the only thing sitting on the glass before and now it was dangling by its power and phone cables over the desk frame. I touched it, it was barely lukewarm. Nothing could have explained why the glass exploded. I eventually dismissed it as a fluke. Maybe the tempered glass had a structural flaw for manufacturing, I told myself. After a few uneventful weeks, about a month later, I was home alone again, this time at night. I was on my sofa watching some movie. All the lights were off. The only light source was the flickering lights of the TV. Out of the blue, I heard a sound coming from the bathroom to my right. The bathroom door was slightly ajar. I couldn't make out the noise at first. The noise stopped. I shrugged it off and kept watching my movie. Less than a minute later, the noise came back. This time, I did recognize it. The hairdryer. My whole body froze. My brain attempted to rationalize it. It was the hairdryer. I usually sat it down beside the sink. It was always plugged in. But this hairdryer had a mechanical sliding switch. There was no way in hell that it could just magically turn on all by itself. This does not compute. With my petrified body, I continued staring blankly at my TV while trying to process it all. Maybe it'll shut off by itself again, I thought to myself. Maybe it's all in my head. But the sound never stopped. Chills started running down my spine. I muted the TV. The sound coming from the bathroom was deafening now. It was the only sound in the absolute silence of the house. I reluctantly turned my head towards the bathroom. All I could see was the door and the darkness that lies beyond the little crack. Fuck, I thought to myself. Fuck. After what it seemed to be an eternity, I mustered up enough courage to stand up and walk over to the bathroom door. I stood there and tried to strategize my next move. My body was in fight or flight mode. My body hair was standing on end and I very much wanted to get the fuck out of there. There was really no two ways about it. I had to go in and turn off the hairdryer or it could become a fire hazard. My arm felt as if it weighed a ton. I summoned all the strength to lift it up and to open the door with one finger or staying as far away as possible getting ready to run. Run? Are you shitting me? Where to? Can you even run away from whatever lies within? I stood fast while the door swung wide open. I peeked into the dimly lit bathroom with the little light from the TV. Nothing there. But the sound of the hairdryer grew even louder now. I stepped in, turned on the lights and cautiously walked over to the counter, purposefully averting my gaze from the mirror. It's always the mirror, I recalled from the movies. The hairdryer was within arm's reach now. It was roaring aimlessly beside the sink. The vibration reverberated through the wooden frame of the countertop. The swirling warm air didn't help with the chill in my bones. I quickly picked it up and turned it off. The sliding switch was not in some half on half off position. It was solidly in the on position. I looked around, but nothing was out of the ordinary. Nothing funny was in the mirror either. Trust me, I looked. I didn't want to, but I eventually did. Needless to say, I had all the lights turned on in the house until my parents came home that night. I never told them what happened. A week went by. I was again sitting on the couch. Something seemed off. Colors of everything faded and details blurred. It looked like my room, but not my room. My couch, yet not mine. I looked to my right, and there it was. A girl with a stranger's face in her late teens, wearing her white sleeping gown, standing in front of the bathroom door. There was no word. She only gave me a little innocent smile, as if she was announcing, yes, it was I in the room. 
and I'm here just to say hello. Yet, I felt no fear, no evil vibe. All I felt was a sense of peace and calm, perhaps even a dash of bashfulness. Wow, actually, you look quite hot for being a ghost, I said to the ghost girl. Not sure what got into me. She gave me a weird stare for my inappropriate comment and didn't utter a word. That's when I woke up and nothing strange ever happened again. I might be the first human being ever to weird out a ghost. And yes, got ghosted by a ghost. This happened years ago when I was still in high school. My cousin and I lived close to each other. Our houses were only two blocks apart and we spent most of our time together. We were the same age and we went to the same school. A lot of the time, I would stay the night at their place or she would at ours. To give you a better perspective, my bed was located exactly in front of the door to my room. When you walked in, the first thing you would see would be my bed. And whenever she stayed over, either we would share the bed or I would sleep on the bed and she would sleep on the floor. This one particular night, we decided to watch a movie. And because there wasn't enough space for the laptop and our snacks and the blankets and everything, we both put the blankets and everything on the floor next to my bed to have more space. The movie was not that entertaining. And in the middle of it, I slowly fell asleep. I don't know how much time had passed, but sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up. Keep in mind, when I wake up for at least five minutes, I have no clue what's going on around me. I open my eyes and the first thing I see is a figure. I'm not a brave person or anything, but at that moment, I didn't think it was anything or anyone dangerous. I try to see better in the dark, but it's a bit difficult, so I sit up. The figure was standing in the door frame and it looked like it was kind of leaning towards one side of the frame. When I flash my phone towards it, I can see that it's actually my cousin. I asked her why she's up. But she didn't say anything. She just kept standing there leaning on the door frame. One thing that looked really wrong was that she was looking really sad and frustrated. I don't know how to explain the look on my face other than looking sad and hurt while leaning on the door frame. She wasn't answering me and I had no idea what the hell was going on and what she was doing standing there in the middle of the night. Maybe something bad happened to her. Keep in mind this took about 10 seconds before I started to get up to see why she was standing there and not answering me. I put my hand down to get up and immediately knew that this was wrong. I put my hand down on someone. I looked down to see that it's my cousin sleeping next to me, deep asleep, not having a clue what was going on. That's when I freaked out. You'd think at that moment you would immediately look up to see what the heck what you saw was. But I was so scared I would rather not look up and see. I was practically shaking, too scared to look up. When I finally looked up, which was probably less than eight seconds later, there was absolutely no one there at the door frame. I talked about this to someone I knew who had paranormal knowledge, and he told me that humans have doubles. They look exactly like us, so much that you wouldn't be able to tell they're not who you think they are. Hey, so I lived in a 90 plus year old house in Kentucky for about six years. And throughout all six years, I've heard weird stuff. I'm almost 18. Now something you should know about me is that I'm skeptical of the paranormal, but I have the philosophy, if I don't fuck with it, it won't fuck with me. There's no reason we can't just be in the same house and leave each other alone. The first thing I heard that really got my attention was four years ago. I was sitting in my basement, which is a repurposed cellar, playing video games on my laptop. I didn't have the sound on, and in the middle of a game of League of Legends, I both feel and hear someone whisper in my left ear. I bolted up the stairs as fast as I could, and later wrote it off as the plumbing making weird noises. I had heard stuff before this, but that was back in middle school, so I don't see that as credible. Recently, Maybe a month ago at the start of quarantine, my family was in the extension on the back of my house, which is a two-story tall room 
with a bunch of windows. At eight or nine-ish, we heard rather heavy footsteps on the roof. There was no possible way someone could have got up there. My mom's reaction was, what the fuck was that, a ghost? I responded, don't go investigate the weird sound. That's how people die in horror movies. She proceeded to go investigate. There's a window that looks out onto that roof in my parents' bathroom, so she ran upstairs to check. She didn't say anything, so we laughed off and said it was probably a ghost. Most recently, I was staying up late in my room, playing video games online with my friends. Around 3am, I feel like I'm being watched. It's that weird feeling where the hair on your neck stands up and you feel almost like a presence nearby. Well, I felt like there was something outside my second story window about two feet away from me. I looked out and saw nothing. About an hour later, I felt it again and heard the sound of a long scratch on a screen door or like on silk. That sound gives me goosebumps like nails on a chalkboard or styrofoam being rubbed together. So I was like, what the fuck? That was weird. And dismissed it as a house noises or night sounds. The next morning, I looked out that window and found about an eight inch long rip in the window screen. Back in 2011, my granddad passed away in my nan's home. A week before he passed away, he wanted a new bombar phone that he saw in a Yours magazine. So my nan ordered it for him. It arrived on the day he passed away. Obviously, my granddad wasn't alive anymore to use his new mobile phone, so my nan decided to use it as she couldn't return it. But she said she needed a new phone anyway. It was a very weird looking phone. There was more room for the keypad than the actual screen, so you couldn't really use it for texting. So she only used it for calls. Back then, she didn't know how to text on a keypad phone. So she added known mobile number contacts like my mom, brother and family. About two days after my granddad passed away, we were talking about the memories from when he was alive and how much we love and miss him. Then the phone received a text. We all went quiet and then checked the phone. It was a weird number and there was just a blank text. We thought it was a coincidence that the phone went off whilst we were talking about my granddad. But this just didn't happen once. It happened again and again whenever we spoke about him. And it was from the same number with just a blank message. I believe it was my granddad showing signs that he was still there and wanting us to know he'll never leave. It freaked me out, but still gave me comfort. I then experienced something else that was spooky. My nan has a china cabinet she still owns from 20 plus years ago and it has a built-in mirror inside it. I was brushing my hair in the mirror. Then behind me, I saw my granddad sitting in the chair he passed away in, just smiling at me. I was only young, so I obviously froze and got really freaked out, to the point I ran to my mom and nan crying. They didn't believe me at first, but now they know I wouldn't make something up I've mentioned for years since it's happened. I still mention it to this day. We kept receiving texts for three years after my granddad passed, and bearing in mind, this only happened whenever we spoke about him. Until my nan decided to get a new phone and SIM card. She switched the phone off and kept it in a drawer ever since. The text tone always gave me some feeling of comfort, but still makes me shiver a bit. Many years later, I found out it was a very famous EDM song called Children by Robert Miles. Whenever I hear the song, it always brings back memories and gives me some sort of comfort, yet a spooky feeling. I found the phone today. It's currently charging, but I think he's moved on. We haven't received a sign ever since. My mom told me the story about my great grandfather when I was younger, and I often tell it around campfires now that I'm older. One day, as it was reaching dusk, my great grandfather was on his way home in the countryside of Japan, and the quickest way there was straight through a large empty field. He started on the path, and as he made his way down, he noticed two well dressed men and started to follow them. He looked forward and continued on. A few more paces and he looks back. The two men were much closer than before. It was as if they teleported. 
There was no way they could have gotten that close that fast at the pace they were walking. My grandfather sped up his pace before checking behind himself again. The two businessmen had closed a huge amount of distance again and were nearly directly behind my grandfather. At that point, he could hear their footsteps closing in when, out of nowhere, a dog appeared. My grandfather looked back for the two businessmen, who at that point should have been right on top of him, but they'd vanished. He looked around for any sight of them, but the field was completely empty, with no place for them to have disappeared to. He looked down to the dog and felt that the men slash spirits disappeared due to its presence. He continued the rest of the way home with the dog never straying from his side. As my grandpa walked through the door of his house, he told my great grandma to get a saucer of milk for the dog waiting outside. She grabbed the milk, but in the same time it took her to do so, the dog vanished just like the two men. My family is convinced that the dog was a spirit who protected my grandfather from whoever or whatever those two men were. This is a story from when I was about six or seven. One of my old neighbors used to babysit some of my kids my age in the summers. Since they were about my age and the only boys on my street, I would always go over to see them. My neighbor's house is right on the edge of a small forested area and there are tons of trees and areas to hide in. There was also a small path cutting right through the wooded area. So sometimes people would go through my neighbor's yard to get to it. One time I was playing with my friends in my neighbor's yard when I looked over at one of the trees. I saw a dark black figure, not like the race black, but shadow black, standing beside it. The figure was pitch black, no facial features, no clothing, nothing. And he wasn't see-through like a shadow is, he was pitch black. He ducked behind the tree before I could get a better look. I told my mom about it, but she didn't think much of it since I was so young. A few months later, I was riding my bike past my neighbor's yard. I looked over at the trees and sure enough, he was there. I stared at him for a moment before looking back in front of me, hit the curb and scraped up my knee. When I looked back, he was gone again. This is the last story I have about him. About a year after I first saw him, me and my sister were in my backyard playing on our playset. All of a sudden, I heard my mom yelling for me to grab my sister and come in. My sister was like three or four at the time. I grabbed her and ran back in, but just before I got inside, I glanced over at the fence. And there he was, staring at me and my sister. I asked my mom why she called us in, and she told us it was because she saw the man too, and thought he was some creep or something. She described it exactly as I had. I never saw him again. Nowadays, I still don't know if it was some sort of spirit or just some type of creepy dude that I happened to see multiple times. My sister was too young to really remember him, but me and my mom still talk about it till this day. Our family has always been sensitive to the paranormal. When my mom was young, She was tormented by a force that would slam doors, turn off lights, and once even slapped her cheek. For my case, I've had instances of seeing shadow figures being grabbed and pushed through a doorway, but my younger sister had the worst instance. When she was five, she got locked in her bedroom, which is weird because the doors have no way of locking, either with a key or those pressure turn handles. She screamed for us to help and we couldn't open the door. Finally, my dad broke the door open to find her crying in a fetal position under the bed. When we asked what happened, she refused to tell us. She refuses to sleep in pitch black and is very skittish around dark places in general. That was seven years ago and we still have strange occurrences happening. It doesn't matter whether we're in our house or away in a hotel. We always have unexplainable experiences that are terrifying. My family is devoutly Christian. We go to church every Sunday and are very involved in personal spiritual growth. We've done everything to try and stop these paranormal activities happening. We've had pastors pray over the house, burned sage, 
prayed as a family to stop, and even had a Catholic priest perform an exorcism on the house. Nothing works. This isn't just my family's problem, though. All the way back to my great-grandmother, there have been strong supernatural occurrences. Even three generations back, they couldn't get rid of whatever demon haunts our bloodline. The final straw happened last week. My younger sister stayed home alone while the rest of the family went to an activity. She was staying in her room on the second story. Suddenly, she heard heavy footsteps above her in the attic. She got scared, but didn't panic, as this happens semi-frequently. The footsteps stopped, and then she heard a man's voice yell her name. She stayed in her room and just ignored it. The voice yelled again, but was outside her door. She just assumed it was my dad and ripped the door open to see what was up. She didn't see anything, but felt a hand grab her shoulder. Because we've been dealing with this, we usually handle these extreme cases with a few biblical phrases. She held out a crucifix and yelled, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this house. That must have angered it, because she got three long fingernail type scratches on her back. She freaked out and ran out of the house. My parents came home later and said they felt cold and hateful when they went into her room. So a little bit of backstory. First, my fiance Jay and I had gotten a kitten together and we loved him with everything. And tragically, we lost him too young due to an accident. We were obviously very broken and distraught. We think he was still here. We could hear his little squeak. Random things would get battered across the living room. You would just feel a presence. Recently, we got another kitten, T. We weren't looking for one, but an abandoned four-week-old kitten showed up and needed a home, so we took him in. We stopped noticing anything unusual, other than maybe T would start acting like he was playing with someone, but nothing directed at us. Now for the whole wholesome encounter. We sleep with our new kitten in this crate yet in our room. The other night we were both sound asleep. Then I woke up to the feeling of a kitten walking over me, my pillow, and towards the cubby in the headboard. So I reached for my flashlight to look for our kitten and think, why did Jay let him out of his crate in the middle of the night? Then Jay said, I lost him, where is he? I shined my flashlight everywhere and T wasn't on the bed. We then checked the crate. There he was, sleeping so soundly, the door closed. So back to sleep we went. The next morning I was telling Jay how weird it was that we both thought it was out of the crate and on the bed. I thought he let him out. He thought I let him out. Jay told me he felt a kitten climb over him to the middle of the bed. We stopped and looked at each other and realised what it was. It wasn't T. It wasn't a simultaneous dream. It must have been our first kitten just walking over us to go to bed. I was so happy he decided to visit us again. He's welcome any time. So this was one of the strangest, most intense experiences of my life. I've rarely spoken of it just because it felt so surreal. One time, I had driven out of town with a friend to a beach town for the day. We decided to go get a drink before going down to hang out at the beach. I think we both got iced tea and sat outside the little cafe. The little, old, seeming, seemingly homeless lady walked by, and honestly, I would never have noticed if she hadn't stopped. She grabbed my arm, and when I looked at her, she had these eyes. I can't even describe them. I've never seen eyes like that in my life. I don't think I ever will. They saw. I felt exposed. She told me, there's a storm coming. Life is about to get very, very hard for you. You're going to want to give up. And you might, but you shouldn't. You'll be given strength. It will all end up okay. Just hold on. Something to that effect. Because I'm certain that's what she said. But, you know, memories are not reliable. At this point, for some strange ass reason, my friend and I are flat out crying. It was just so intense, I do not know how to begin to explain what washed over us. The waiter came and shooed her away. Before she left, 
she turned and she said, My name is Isabel. My heart damn near stopped. She walked away. The waiter apologised to us. And what was odd is he also looked confused. He said he hadn't seen her in the area before. It isn't abnormal for this to happen in that area and the place I lived. There is a high homeless population. The thing is, the same ones typically stick around the same areas, so it was off that he never had. Not a biggie, but interesting. Now the two things that made this experience paranormal, or rather spiritual, are that one, I proceeded to have the two hardest years of my life. I did give up. I flat out gave up, but somehow in some way I survived and got my shit back together and even moved to a new country and started an amazing life. Things aren't perfect, but if you told me that this would be my life in that two year period, I would never have believed you. And two, a very, very close relative I had lost and been dreaming about was named Isabel. I've always found it off that she didn't open with that. Why did she wait until the end to say it? I'll never know. However, she made sure to say it. I've always wondered if that lady was even a human being. The only person I shared this with was my dad, right after the fact, and he also got that overwhelmed feeling and cried as well. He was speechless and convinced it was an angel. I'll never forget how he said goodbye to me on that phone call. Well, I guess we need to brace ourselves then, huh? If only he knew what was coming next. Good God. So it's been pretty clear since a young age that my house is haunted. I saw deceased pets walking around the place, felt the weight and smelt the scent of my old dog on my bed multiple times. My dead nan visited me in dreams. There were writings on the ceiling of my bedroom. I even had my own personal demon for months until I was finally able to banish it. However, it's been a few years since I've had a true paranormal experience in my own home. Recently, I've been seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Just black shapes, moving quickly out of sight. Tonight, I'm home alone for the first time in months. My partner isn't here, my parents are on holiday, and my sister is with her partner at his house. I'm currently taking a break, in a now brightly lit room, from shutting all the curtains and turning out the lights. Our house is a three-story Victorian-esque house. It's old. The attic was converted into a bedroom for my parents before I was born, I believe. My bedroom is to the left, at the foot of the stairs leading up into their room. There's also a landing window at the foot of their stairs, just before they turn out into the hallway. So I had the light on at the foot of their stairs. I'm a coward, sue me. And I shut the curtains and just turned to shut off the light, when a black, cat-sized shape darts up the stairs past me. I call both my cat's names and just hear a meow from my room, my cat. And my sister's cat ends up being at the foot of the stairs on the bottom floor of the house. I went upstairs with a flashlight and checked the room out and nothing but a warm patch and a cat imprint at the foot of my parents' bed. So I'm thinking I'm probably just my deceased cat, Jay, coming for a visit. Hopefully. It goes back to when I was eight. My mom, older brother and I moved into a small house. One night after dinner, I was looking down the hallway from the front door and I saw a dark figure. It almost resembles what the Grim Reaper would look like, except this thing had a sinister and evil grin on its face. It stared at me, walked into my brother's room. I never saw it leave the room. I'm 23 now and I never have seen it again. I was eight at the time. I told my mom and sobbed because I was scared at what I had just seen. I came from a very religious family, so my mom prayed over the house and everyone in it. About a year later, at night time, I began to see black shadow figures with no faces. They would be around my bed at night and I would sleep with the covers over my head, but every night they would be there. When I was 12, I would have sleepovers and my cousin would stay the night. She would see the dark shadow figures as well. We would run to the living room and try to watch TV and forget about it. We were scared and we didn't know what to do. 
When I hit my teens, my mom and I moved into a house. This house had an attic, and it was very large compared to the house we had lived in before. Every night when I would lay in bed, I would hear what I can only describe as someone walking around the attic, or knocking boxes around. We checked for rats and other things like raccoons many times, but we never found anything in the attic. But this sounded like someone stomping around the attic at night. We never found anything. One day, after doing laundry, my mom hung up the clothes to dry in the laundry room, since the dryer was broken at the time. The next day she went to check out the clothes to dry, a large clot of grape jelly was smeared all over one of the shirts. I didn't do it. My mom didn't do it. No one else was in our house. We don't even know how to explain that one. Another incident was when my cousin came to stay the night. She heard a child crying in the court hallway one night. She got up to check what it was and the crying immediately stopped, she said. She told me about it the next morning and I was freaked out. No one had been up crying. I could go on and on, but that would be a lot to, to say. I don't know how to explain any of this. My mom still lives in the second house, and we still have paranormal activity going on in it that we can't explain. I'm open to hearing your guys' inputs and thoughts.